So these are bull bills. Um, I just wanted to explain a little bit about what a bull bill is in an aroid. So let's explore what kind of plants have them and what they're even for. So we're talking about bull bills in um, aroids. So uh, plants in the, basically in the Araceae family. So you've got your indoors and your outdoor aroids that we've covered on this channel. Uh, and I'm mostly focusing on outdoor aroids here. So these are ones that keep in the garden and they and they have a life cycle through the year if you're in the UK. But the, the, the life cycle that we're quite used to, or most used to, is starting off with a, a, a tuber. And that tuber gets stored every year. And then at some point, this growth point comes out and that starts to grow. And that becomes the, the next year's plant. You plant that at that point, it goes like this. This is a sauromatum and it's just coming up. And that growth then does one or two things. It either opens up with um, a flower spike and you get a, an inflorescence if it's a sauromatum. Um, if it's all, all the ones, they start producing um, inflorescences, which I'll talk to you about in a moment. But if it carries on, it goes to like this, which is an amorphophallus. And then the leaves open. And let's just find one and I'll show you. It would be like this, Aracema. And they start photosynthesizing. And then that sends uh, basically the, the energy, the carbohydrates back into another tuber. So it remakes the tuber. And that cycle starts all over again. That's a basic aroid life cycle. So along the way, a lot of other things happen. So one, they can generate um, inflorescence or, 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 or like grow where the flowers are. So this is a uh, Penelia. Uh, Penelia, this one here is from this plant here, quite a, a large plant. Um, so, and this is a tripartita. And that produces these lovely little inflorescence. And inside there, you're going to have male and female parts usually and um, as insects go in they would pollinate go past the uh, the male parts of the female parts and hopefully drag pollen from another one of these and then fertilize or pollinate those um, ovary there and then you get seeds from that that's that's the common normal life cycle um, obviously we've got pinellia different forms of Penelia here we've got those sauromatum or morphophallus aracema all of these and, and actually that's pretty much the same in in anything that's got that tuberous growth habit so not so much with the indoor aroids they're they're a little bit different but let's focus just on these this one here is an indian giant you can tell by this spotted petiole um if you see it there so that's a sauromatum um as i mentioned but this is a different variety so this this is a lovely, uh, a really, really specifically spotted variety there. So sometimes with certain um, types of aroids, they can uh, just basically clone themselves. And the way that they clone themselves is to create um, uh, bull bills. And the bull bills come in a few different forms. So let me find a couple and show you. So I'm going to show you on uh, mostly on these things so these are let's like say these are the ones that are out at the moment these are Penelia. so if you look here this is Penelia cordata and it's called the yamazaki uh, form and um, if you look here at the base of the midrib you can see a little tiny bull bill there and then in that little joint there they produce these little things so um and that can happen on quite a few different ones so this is Penelia. um it's another cordata actually but it's uh, a green form. But look at the ball bills on here. You can see them everywhere. And these are basically vegetative clones. So basically any of these that you take off will make a clone exactly the same genes as the parent. So it's not an ideal strategy because what most plants want is the vari you know, variation by taking genes from two different plants, mixing them up and coming up with things that can help them with different survival strategies or, or over time. So, but what this is good for is if you ever have a problem where you, you can't reproduce for, for one reason or another, whether it be environmental or whatever, you can at least reproduce vegetatively like this. So let me just show you what a handful of these looks like.
So that is a handful of the bulbils from these Pinellia. And basically, if you just drop those into the soil or drop them around the plant, they will literally, next season, or even sometimes this season, they will come back up with the next crop of, um, you know, of these uh, plants. And they basically they come as seedlings. So if I show you in any of these Pinellia, I'll just put those bulbils down. If you look in any of these, can you see these little tiny heart-shaped ones? If you look deep down inside there, you can see the inflorescence that I described, but you can also see lots of tiny little ones in there. They're where, yet yeah, usually, they're where the bulbils have fallen. There might be some that come from seeds, um, but so the ones from seeds will probably be propagated by another plant. The ones from bulbils are, I'll just pull another one off there as we're talking. The ones from bulbils are the clones, as I've said. Now, if you, um, you pull up one or two of these leaves I've already done this there's another thing that they do so bear in mind at the bottom down in the ground there is a, a tuber which is another way that they have bulbils just stuck on the side of the peduncle there and you can see here if I can get really close this one is already rooted so it's already sprung root so if I kick that off if I drop that in here that will come up probably this year and again, that same applies with it with this variety. Now, here's a few different ones. So this is one called Ternata. And one thing that I want to show you is with Ternata, it's a little bit different. So this one actually creates bulbils that stick near the base. They look like little um, little cakes or um, actually look like little boobs, but I didn't want to say that. Um, you can see them there. That one's actually split that one i thought that might be an insect of some kind or a little gall or something but that's definitely one of the bulbils there well that's that's a very specific way that um Ternata do it now i've seen it in some of the larger outdoor aroids so if you look at ever go to kew gardens and have a look at um the larger amorphophallus in there you'll see that they have great big walnut sized um uh bulbils right in the um, in the in the leaf in the middle of the the center of the main uh, leaf because obviously it's only one leaf with an amorphophallus and they grow right in the center there they look amazing when you see them up close i've dropped everything down over the years and i just get i mean these are mostly seedlings in this so you can see two years worth of you know three years actually if you can count the big ones but obviously that that particular variety doesn't make a bulb up. but with this one you i think i've only already shown you um, if we can focus on this. There's lots and lots of seedlings in this one. I, I, you can see the bulbils there at the top left and the seedlings or the bulbils that have grown from last year's bulbils at the bottom. But you can see this every single leaf makes a bulbil. So they're quite prolific and, and they can actually be quite weedy. Um, that one seems to have a marbling. So I don't know if that's a virus or whether that's actually worth keeping as a separate one. So I might pull that one out and keep it. So yeah, bulbils are basically a way to clone um, y yourself if you're, a, you're, you're an aroid. So one last thing I can show you is the difference between these and an aracema, because this is something that comes up all the time. So let me go and grab an aracema inflorescence. Okay, so these are um, two inflorescences, one from an aracema here and one from a Pinellia here. And they look fundamentally the same. They've got the same structure, and it's very hard to tell sometimes. So the way that you tell with these varieties, if you open up and peel back, and you can split it off completely, you can see the spadix underneath. But the reason I'm struggling is, with a Pinellia, the back of the spadix is stuck to the spathe. So the reason I can't peel that back anymore is that is actually stuck there. It's literally a part of it. So it won't go any further down than that. It's literally stuck. And that's how Penelia look. So if you look at Aracema and open up the Aracema, you can see that you could actually peel that back all the way and all the way to the base. Now, some, some Aracema are hermaphroditic, some are male, some are female, some have both, as I say. Um, so you can see there that just peels all the way down to reveal the entire 
length of the spadix. So the spade will peel all the way down to the base down there. And that's basically the one easy way. If you just happen to pick one of these up and you're not sure at all, that's one quick way to start the keying out what it is. Um, you can see that's straightforward. Um, you know, you can see the, the, the flower parts of the spadix, uh, or on top of the spadix. Uh, quite good. So that's just a little, a little tip, just to, in case you ever get confused. If you like this kind of content, then give us a thumbs up. And if you're giving us a thumbs up, then why not subscribe to the channel and follow along with our weekly Aroid and Rare Plant Adventures.